Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with my December reading wrap up. Um, I read 10 books in December, although strictly I only read seven because three I was finishing off from previous times. So I didn't read 10 full books. Um, I, I had three that were carried over. Um, I read nine physical books and I read one on my Kindle. Now, my Kindle isn't really something that I use very often. I love my Kindle, don't get me wrong, but I think we can all agree that the physicality of a book is lovely. Uh, the, the touch, the feel, the texture, the smell, a book gives you that, whereas a Kindle doesn't. But Kindle is fabulous, don't get me wrong. So the one that I read on the Kindle um, was The Girls of Quality Street. No, it wasn't. It was The Quality Street Girls by Penny Thorpe. Now, this was like a historical uh, sort of um, Christmas story set in the, the Quality Street uh, factory in um, Yorkshire, in Halifax, and it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. it. Took me a while to read because it's it was on the Kindle. I don't always feel comfortable reading from the Kindle. Um, but I buddy read this with uh, Julie from The Hungry Bookworm and she read it like in about two days and I took about 10, <laughs> maybe slightly more. Um, but I really liked this. This tells the story of a, a, a bunch of girls um, who have a temporary job uh, on the run up to Christmas in the Quality Street factory. Um, it's set in 1936 when Quality Street, the, the chocolate brand, was uh, first started and it's the first Christmas of Quality Street. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, history in here about the about the chocolate factory, although it's been sort of told in a fictional kind of story-like way. Um, you get the background of, of some of the girls and their backstories and how, how they kind of tick and it was really good and uh, really out of my comfort zone. Um, I don't tend to read a lot of, I'm going to call this chick lit. Um, I, don't, I don't tend to read a lot of that, uh, but when I finished this, I immediately downloaded the second book in the series and I will read that at some point very soon because I really enjoyed it. Um, so that was The Quality Street Girls by Penny Thorpe. If you get a chance, give it a go. Perfect Christmas read. Although we're now past that, um, we're still in the sort of festive period, in the cooling off side of the, the festive period. So yeah, give that a go. Now the next one, you can't strictly say that I read this in December because I read this every, pretty much every day of 2020. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this. This felt so uh, so friendly, so comfortable to read every day. It's a book of positive affirmations. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really loved it. And with 2020 being what it was, um, this really got me through in many ways. It is Start Your Day with Katie, 365 Affirmations for a Year of Positive Thinking by Katie Piper. Um, there was a new affirmation every day of the month and then on the first day of the month there was like a monthly mantra and I really enjoyed this. This was lovely and it it it, it, lift, it helped it, it helped it it helped it. <laughs> Maybe I'll learn to talk next. <laughs> um, it really helped to lift my mood in 2020 and I think that's something that we we all could benefit from at after the year we've had and going into a new year where unfortunately the situation won't just stop like that. Um, although many people seem to think it will. But yeah, if you get a chance to read this, it's lovely and you won't regret it. Um, yeah. So um, I don't know if I've already said, but these books are in no particular reading order. Um, they're just in the order that uh, they were from a, my thumbnail photograph, I'm afraid. So yeah, I'm, I'm showing you them out of sync of how I read them. Um, it was Christy Fest in December and um, the, the choice was a Hercule Poirot and it's Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie. Um, according to Goodreads, I had already read this. I hadn't, 
what I had done, I realised um, after getting about 50 or so pages into this and recognising nothing, um, was that I had marked this as having been read when it was actually um, the mystery of the Christmas pudding, I want to say it's called, um, which is another uh, Hercule Poirot story. It's a short story, but I think that's what I had done. So yeah, Goodreads thought I'd read this before. Um, so this is a, a, a classic um, Hercule Poirot story. Uh, 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 an old man, a very rich old man is murdered and uh, twisty, turny, really typical Agatha Christie. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, and the, the ending, as always, was just incredible. On, as only Agatha Christie could have written. Um, and I didn't see it coming. I say this all the time when I read an Agatha Christie, and I really didn't. I didn't see, that, see it coming. I won't spoil it for you. Um, wait till next Christmas and read it yourself. Or indeed, read it whenever. <laughs> but if you get a chance to, I definitely would, uh, because it's a very good one. And this edition, I love it. Um, it's, a, it's a first edition from the 1930s, and it's just lovely. So, the next one was another one that I had carried over from a previous month. I think I'd probably been reading this for about two months previously, to be honest. It was a collection of short stories by Margaret Atwood, and it's called Murder in the Dark. So, the short stories are more kind of flash fiction. Um, they're really short. Some of them are like only a page long. Um, and they're gloriously strange. I really enjoyed this, um, but my concentration when I, I started reading it just kind of fell away and I and, and I just I laid the book aside and then picked something else up when I felt like I could concentrate again. And then I didn't get back into this when I wanted to. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to, to not finish it because I really enjoyed uh, the first half that I read. I enjoyed the whole thing, but it was just concentration. Um, gloriously weird kind of otherworldly stories um there's one story that she talks about uh, her and her brother made poison um when they were like five years old and they put dead things in it they peed in it and uh they don't remember if they poisoned anyone um which yeah scary <laughs> but brilliant this is so so good um and i, I think this would kind of act as a, a kind of a, a doorway into Margaret Atwood's writing if you'd never read her before. Um, it was the first thing by Margaret Atwood that I started to read and then I read Dearly by her um, in November and I really loved that. That was her new collection of poetry. Um, so yeah, a really good sort of doorway into, into her writing and yeah, it's brilliant. So the next one that I read I'd seen everywhere, I'd heard really good things about it. Um, the, the the sort of the, the plot line appealed to me, but also at the same time, the values of it, I didn't kind of agree with because it, it's not my life, it's not me. Um, and it's, here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. This talks about uh, a woman who has been having an affair behind her husband's back with a married man. The married man then dies um, and she can't openly grieve because he wasn't hers to grieve over. So what happens is that she worms her way in to the the wife of the, of the man she was having an affair with. She worms her way into her life and kind of poses as, as almost a friend. She's also the man's uh, lawyer um, in the book. So she writes up the will and all this kind of stuff and that's how they end up you know doing what they're doing um and it, yeah it's it's an uncomfortable read like i say it doesn't tally with my values of how a relationship should be um but i can appreciate that the writing in this was absolutely stunning it was very sort of poetic it was told in tiny little vignettes um and i really appreciated that it didn't take long to read at all. I, I did this in a couple of sittings and yeah, I, I, I did enjoy it, but it was kinda, yeah, it was a bit close to the bone because like I say, it's not who I am in my relationship, um, but yeah. So the next one that I read was a first for me. 
Um, I have never read anything by either this author or about this character. Um, and when I saw this in Tesco's, I couldn't not have it because it just looked so lovely. It's How to Be More Paddington by Michael Bond, A Book of Kindness. This was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. I think it's like excerpts from um, the the Paddington books, um, sort of little, little uh, um, passages and stuff like that and artwork. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. And it does, it has a message of kindness, friendship, um, patience and love. And it's just the cutest thing. Um, and I think this is like, I want to say seven pounds in Tesco's. I can't remember. I, I saw it and I had to have it. It was in the trolley and that was that. Um, but yeah, this was lovely. I really enjoyed this. Then I also, from Tesco's, I picked this up. I think it might have been the same shopping trip. Possibly, I can't remember. Um, but it's The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie Maxey. Um, this, again, was beautiful. I loved it. The artwork was just out of this world. Um, and the story, again, of love, friendship, patience, kindness, family. Um, and it's just, just beautiful. I mean, that's... A, a beautiful piece of artwork. It's not my favourite. Where was my favourite now? Um, let's see. I should have paid, I should have bookmarked this. I should have bookmarked this. But I didn't and here we are. So <laughs> um, I think that was definitely one of my favourites. It's just beautiful. Uh, so yeah. Um, the next one that I read was another one that I had been reading previously. Um, according to Goodreads, I started this in September 2020. I didn't. That's when I marked that I was reading it because I'm fairly certain that I started reading this. I didn't actually read it. I listened to it in audiobook. Um, I started listening to this, um, I think in the very, very late stages of 2019, um, possibly, or very, very early 2020. Um, <laughs> BC, <laughs> before the that thing. Um, it's Becoming by Michelle Obama. So I audiobook this and it was just incredible. It tells the story of um, how she uh, became a lawyer. Um, she went to um, Harvard um, and how she met Barack and uh, her, how her children uh, were born and, and that they had been trying for so long and they just weren't falling pregnant and then then they had two children uh, Malia and Sasha and th just this lovely this lovely family um, and then they become the first family and uh, it just it having Michelle Obama read this herself it just I, I loved it um, but I think, I think it was a concentration thing. With audiobooks, I can tend to zone out and I don't take anything in. Um, so I kind of stopped this. And then towards like the end of 2020, I thought I need to finish a, few, a fair few books. Um, and this, is, this was one of them. So I, 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 I took two days and just blasted through the 50% of the, the audio that I had left um, and I really loved this. This was just so, so lovely. She's so real. She's so articulate. She's so down to earth and just real. It's the only way that I can describe her. Just a beautiful human being and her story is an inspirational one. Um, and I can't wait to read Barack's new one, A Promised Land. Um, I may audiobook that as well because it's read by Barack Obama himself. But yes, so we're down to the last two. Um, this I adored. Uh, I think it was Simon Savage who had a copy of this and he read it. Um, he had it on his Instagram. And I, when I saw it and when I saw who it was by, I couldn't not. I just had to have it. It's Where Snow Angels Go by Maggie O'Farrell. And it's illustrated by Daniela Jaglenka Terrazzini. I am probably butchering that name, but this was just stunning. A gorgeous story and a beautiful piece of art. 
and I will read this every Christmas time um, because it's just such a lovely inspirational story. Um, the inside of the dust jacket is a repeat of the dust jacket design and then oh it's just gorgeous. The end papers look like that and let's see let's get a gorgeous really I mean it's all gorgeous but let's get like a super gorgeous one okay so so this is when the little girl has woken up in the night and her snow angel who is basically like her guardian angel has come to visit and um, it tells the story of a little girl um Sylvie and she has made a snow angel and when you make a snow angel snow angels go up to heaven and or into the sky or wherever and they are always there they're always looking down on you protecting you looking after you um and she becomes very sick and her snow angel protects her and she gets through her sickness and when it's the next time it snows she urges her friends and her family to make uh snow angels because she wants them all to be protected. It's just beautiful. Um, and if you get a chance to read this, you have to. Um, and I think it, it, it's going to become a Christmas tradition for me because it's just lovely. And we all need that, especially after the year we've been through. And yeah, so. Now, the last one that I read was a book that I bought during the first lockdown. Um, and then I just didn't get to it. And I regret that because it's just amazing. Um, it's Madame Badoubada by Sophie Dahl. This was lovely. Um, it tells the story of, what was the little girl's name again? Mabel and Madame Badoubada. Mabel works, or rather lives, in a hotel. And Madame Badoubada is a very sort of um, eccentric old lady who comes to visit and, well, comes to stay and Mabel kind of takes an instant dislike to her because she sees her as bossy and like out there and whatever else um, and gradually they, they, they form a friendship and they go on these adventures but they're only really telling each other stories so it's it's the imagine it's the imagination of a child and and hearing stories and 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 and, and friendship and it's just lovely it's just so beautiful and the artwork is just cute as well. So Madame Badoubada, um, Mabel has an idea that she is a, a jewel thief <laughs> and that's her robbing a bank and uh, tunnelling her way to escape. <laughs> it's just lovely. Um, I don't remember if it was, there's a yes. So there is a design on the inside as well and it's like lighthouses, seagulls and rowboats. It's very cute and yeah. Again, if you get a chance to pick this up, do, because it's 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 a lovely way to spend half an hour or 45 minutes. Um, it's just lovely. So that is my December reading wrap up. Um, even though you're seeing this in 2021, this is my last wrap up for 2020. So let's hope that 2021 is a better year for all of us. We'll get there eventually, I'm fairly certain. Um, let's hope it's a good reading year for us all and that we all read what we what we want to to read to broaden our minds and escape from whatever situations we find ourselves in that we need to escape from um but that's me going on a tangent again i will let you go and get on with the rest of your day uh, because i'm sure you've got some dishes to do or indeed a couple of chapters of your book to read <laughs> so thank you so much for watching Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.